In Cheshire, there's been a five-car crash on the M6. With Porsche. Should we try and get it across? Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, it will. Luckily, there are no injuries. So it's up to PCs Ian Cosgrove and Matt Turner to clear the carriageway and get traffic back on the move. Who's is this one? Is this yours, sir? Let's get you over to there, mate. As soon as we can get that onto there, we can open up the motorway. There's no job too little, too big for the motorway cops. With 8 million dash cams in our vehicles, we can reveal Britain's worst driving offenders, from total mayhem to absolute madness. We join Cheshire's motorway cops as they fight to keep our roads safe. We capture the action. We've got one casualty who's potentially serious. I just can't believe I've done that to my car. I'm PC Doran from Cheshire Police. Oh, no, you see that again, bro? You see it when I told you to see it, bro. That's a positive kind of mess already. Oh, you smoke weed? We do. God loves to try, yeah. Have you ever passed a driving test anywhere? Driving test? Oh, no. Helping them in their battle with idiots behind the wheel is dash cam. It's vital evidence. You haven't got dash cam, have you? And proof that Britain's dumbest drivers are a law unto themselves. Oh, my God! Tonight, a suspected drink driver in a live lane. Stand up now, we're in a live motorway. An encounter with a superhero. We've got a bat black Batmobile of us. I'm not Batman. <laughs> do, do. <laughs> and it's a race against time to stop a stolen car. To catch up, I have to drive a very pleasant 155 miles an hour. Just like the American patches of state troopers, I think quite cool. So I've got a few that I've bought myself on the internet, a few that uh, have just been given to me, like this one here, that's a swap coin. And it's not just PC Ian Cosgrove's memorabilia that has come all the way from the US of A. I was born in America, a bit American obsessed. Drives my wife mad, said if, she, if I cut you in half, there'd be an American flag. You never know, one day I may be on an interstate in a big Dodge as a state trooper, telling them all my war stories about when I was policing the M6. But we'll go and head out onto it now, eh? Police emergency, what's your location? I, I just want to notify police of a drink driver. He's southbound pulling out of Nutford services. He bumped into the kid, got out, had a wee, and then as he got back in the van, he drank out of a bottle of white wine. It's a blue Vauxhall van. Any patrols on the M6 from Nutford services? Observations for a combo panel van in blue. Mel on board believed to be driving whilst under the influence. Informant stating that the male is drinking from a bottle of wine. That makes my zero one six. Got it. I'll try and play catch up. The worst case scenario. You can kill someone. By the sounds of it, they're heavily intoxicated. The last thing we want is them to have a, a bump. See whether I can get to him in time. Come on. There we go. Top speed. Thank you, everyone. It's just activated southbound. We're dead close. Oh, what's that there? Boom. With it now. It is uh, 
uh, failed to follow me off onto kill services. Just confirming failed to follow you off. Uh, yes, yes. I'm going to get behind it and follow up for a bit. Ian knows that people who drink and drive cause carnage on our roads. Almost 5,000 car accidents a year involve a drink driver. This drink driver is spotted by North Yorkshire police driving slowly on the wrong side of the road. The driver, who is three times over the limit, is so out of control, she hits the grass verge and flips her car over. She pleaded guilty to drink driving and dangerous driving and was sentenced to 250 hours of community service and banned from driving for three years. I'm back with it now. Back on the M6, PC Ian Cosgrove is attempting to pull over a suspected drink driver. So we're at M6 southbound, just going into lane one. I'm going to go for a traditional hard shoulder stop then and uh, see how it reacts. MH, I'm declaring this a pursuit vehicle failing to stop. Some motorists claim monopoly of our roads. And that's not the only game bad drivers like to play. There's frustration. Risk. Some play Twister. While others enjoy Buckaroo. With it now. PC Ian Cosgrove is in pursuit of a van driver after a 999 caller witnessed him drinking wine behind the wheel. I'm declaring this a pursuit vehicle failing to stop. Currently 5 0, half on the hard shoulder, half not. One mile to the junction, 15. Stand by, I've got a near side indication. Uh, traffic is light, visibility is good. It may be coming off now at junction 15. Stand by, we're currently on the off slip. Vehicle slowing down. Open the car! Open the door now! Open the door now! Right. Failing to stop. Stay there. Don't start. Don't start. This could be easy. Right, come on, out you come. Whoa. Whoa! Get in this car now. Stand up. Whoa. Stand up now. Stand up. Stand up now. We're in a live motorway. Stay there. Run. Stay there. In the car now. Stop prattling about, stay there. Put your legs in. Yeah, vehicle stopped, now detained. I don't know what you're doing. The issue is, is when you get him out of the car, where we are, it may appear that we're a bit rough. But it's to, for our safety and his safety, because I don't want him prattling about on a live lane motorway, so it's getting straight into the back of there. Why have you arrested? Because at the moment, Why have you done this? 
at the moment, you're under arrest for suspicion of being unfit through alcohol, dangerous driving, and failing to stop for police, OK? Stopped? Yeah, eventually, didn't we? And the last 20 minutes, you had anything to drink? I had a pint when I left work. What time was that? 11 o'clock. It's quarter to nine now, so when did you have your pint? 11. 11? Yeah. So it's quarter to nine. So you had it at 11? 11. So that wasn't the last 20 minutes ago, was it? No. Have you used chewing gum in the last 20 minutes? Yeah. So I've started the breathalyzer uh, question that we normally do, but I might as well just ask that bus, I'll get more sense out of it. You'll still be offered a uh, breathalyzer at custody. So what are you doing now? Waiting for another patrol. OK? Yeah, it's fine. And then uh, we'll be going to custody. For what? For what? Right, third and final time. Failing to stop for police, OK? I pulled Swiss... over, I pulled over in a safe place. Failing to stop for police, being unfit through alcohol. Who says that? Me. And dangerous driving. Swerving all over the road. He's not had an accident somehow. Back up, you're coming now. And then we'll take him to Middlewich. So, you keep an eye on him, I'll quickly search there. There we go. That's what I found. One empty bottle and one full bottle. Pretty much the intel was uh, what we were told. It's pretty spot on. Why is your officer in my van? He's just having a look around, mate. Why have you arrested me? Well, I haven't arrested you. The officer's arrested you for being unfit to drive, mm. OK? I've got your phone, right, and I've got your keys. Have you got my phone? I've got your phone, yeah. It's in this bag. The driver is taken to custody for a breathalyzer test that will be admissible as evidence in court. Then it'd be better down to sober up and then do a bit of paperwork. You're right, you know, follow my colleague. So he's going into custody and we're going to ask him uh, to provide a specimen of breath. Now, I'm not a betting man, but I think he's going to refuse. Very up and down, doesn't like me. Do you agree to provide two specimens of breath for analysis? No. Too broke. I warn you again that failure to provide either of these specimens will render you liable to prosecution. Do you now agree to provide two specimens of breath for analysis? So it's the doctor, no. to provide. He stated that he can't provide because he's got rib issues, but it's funny, he's only just mentioned that when we've asked for the specimen of breath, so um, in essence, uh, I don't believe him. I suspect he's probably four or five times over the limit. It's the start of PC Rich Woodward's shift. It looks like it, doesn't it? Let's have a look. And even though he's just come on duty, he's already been called into action. You look, look about as well. Oh, I thought that was a compliment. <laughs> he does look young, doesn't he? Well, I think he does. The moisturising regime, you see. Oh, you see, it's obviously <laughs> working. Well, he's always going to move it, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Good job he came along. Pressure's on. Don't knacker the alloy, goodness sake. I reckon that's using your mobile phone whilst driving. Completely oblivious in a world of his own. 
chap next to us, just driving down lane three of the M6, having a conversation on his mobile phone, sitting at about 58 miles an hour. He's very engrossed in his conversation. No, quick hand swap, no hands on the wheel. He's been on his call so far for almost four minutes. Considering that we've been driving alongside him, majority of that time, he's not got the greatest awareness of what's going on around him. When we get to the next junction, I'll get the vehicle to follow me off the motorway. He's followed us. Right, the reason I've stopped you is a couple of times you've driven past me and you've got your phone in your right hand. Right, if you can just knock your engine off, just come grab a seat in my car. If you're not under arrest, don't panic, and you'll basically get reported for the offence of using your mobile phone whilst driving. Was it a work call that you're on, or...? It was on to somebody for accommodation. Moving for work, or...? Yeah. A new job. I think so. I'm your food pantry. Nice. Anything I might like to eat? There's jam, marmalade. More of a jam man, yeah. Nipper to a pony. At least this driver is used to finding himself in a sticky situation. So, what are the likely options? Worst case scenario is go to the magistrate's court. One back from that would be a £200 fine and six points on your licence. The right. third option could be a form of driver retraining education course. You can fully accept it. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm mortified. I do know what I want to do though. I want to get back to that car and crawl into the ground. <laughs> I just do. I just absolutely do. The moral of the story is, don't use your phone whilst you're driving. Maybe treat yourself to a Bluetooth headset. You know, one that I dropped just in progress. I'm really sorry that you had to waste your time on me. That's all right. More important things than me. Very nice gentleman. He's very sorry for what he's done and remorseful. But at the same time, he obviously knows he shouldn't be doing it. Driving on the M6 at 60 miles an hour with no one's on the steering wheel isn't entirely ideal, is it? For Cheshire's traffic cops, there is one vital bit of kit they're never without for a sunny day on the motorway. It's warm today, so just bought me sunglasses. Basking in the glow of Ellesmere Port is PC Chris Swash. Saying that, I haven't got any sunglasses left because my dog Callie ate them. My little cockapoo at home, bless her. I see it as because she misses me, as opposed to being naughty. You didn't say what eat them, she just chewed the ends, so you can't put them on your ears now because it's full off. BCA2 Hotel Uniform 55. Not bad, can you start making to the A57 Warrington, please, for a Grade 1 RTC? I think there's three vehicles involved, multiple casualties, someone potentially with a fracture, one female with a back injury. Off we go. We had a call through on the radio asking us to attend Warrington. It's been a three vehicle RTC and a number of them involved have got injuries, possibly serious injuries. As traffic officers, we've got to go there and get a grip of the scene, see if there's any evidence, and try and see who's at fault and ascertain what sort of injuries there are. RTCs are our bread and butter, ultimately, because we're on the traffic units. We don't go through a day without an RTC in Cheshire. Hotel Uniform 55. Just for information, this RTC has now been another RTC on the other side of the road, so they have to close both directions. Just had a further update to that on the opposite side of the carriageway to where this RTC is. Another RTC has taken place. All too often on UK roads, one collision leads to another. A 
as traffic builds up, most vehicles slow down. But the HGV behind these cars doesn't. Distracted by an incident on the hard shoulder, the driver causes an accident of his own. And rubberneckers give this truck driver road rage as they slow down for a better view. Ah, it's a car, it's got off the road. Go up, people! Ah! It's all too easy to take your eyes off the road at exactly the wrong time. <laughs> Almost 40% of road accidents in Britain are caused by drivers not looking where they're going. It's a car crash, and potentially other people injured. In Cheshire, PC Chris Swash is on the way to not one, but two car collisions on the same road. We're to make sure there's no drink or drugs involved. We're still 15 minutes away. Bad driving can come at you from all angles. But thanks to Dashcam, Britain's drivers now have eyes in the back of their heads. Almost half of all UK motorists have been involved in a rear-end collision. While this driver walked away unharmed, these three Dashcam dummies do a runner. vehicle RTC and a number of involved have got injuries. PC Chris Wash is blue lighting to Warrington, where a car crash has distracted drivers on the other side of the road, causing a second collision. On the opposite side of the carriageway to where this RTC is, another RTC is taking place. We should be there in about five minutes, but that depends on traffic. Come on, get out of the way. Completely oblivious. We're not far now. So here. Yeah. Were you in that car? Yeah. yeah. How are you all? Stupid question, I know. I've got a saw net. You you want me saw back? You who's got the saw? Okay. Oh, we was just in the line of traffic. The missus started screaming, frightened me. Yeah. And I looked at her, next minute, bang, and uh, he'd run in back of us. And his dog in front seat, and he had his cruise control on. Why you'd have cruise control on on a yeah, well, town centre yeah. road? He looked at his dog, he said, and then as soon as he looked back, he was too, too late. Fella said. There's nothing you can do, is there? Nothing you can do other than scream. My advice to you is just dogs, keep them in the back in one of those little seat belts, because they do take your attention, don't they, all the time. My advice would be around cruise control and stuff is don't use it on 30. He's had his car in cruise control, trying to save on his fuel, which is fair enough, because it's astronomical at the moment. But he's also had his dog on the front seat, so he's not been paying complete attention to the traffic that stopped ahead of him. And then he's just gone straight into the back of the other car at 30 miles an hour. He completely gets it. He knows who it's fault. He knows he should have been paying more attention. So he'll get reported for driving without due care and attention. So what's happened to this one up here, mate? That's the second RTC that's occurred whilst we've been dealing with this. Well, stationary traffic, the vehicle at the back has been rubbernecking, essentially. Yeah. It's not seen the stationary traffic and plowed straight into the back of the, yeah. the other one. Um, no injuries, thankfully. It's 
caused complete carnage, really, in Warrington Town Centre. Traffic's dead busy, and in a matter of minutes, two bumps can occur, which closes one of the biggest roads in and out of Warrington. The chaos it causes around, it's a bit of a pain in the backside, to be honest. Text me this morning, get some milk. Do we jump out? Yeah, you jump back a little bit. Oh. PC's Matt Turner and Ian Cosgrove stop off for essentials before starting another shift. Ported. Yep. Get a balloon out. Put this pad to that. I know, yeah. It's a 10 2. Bit of that, we? Bit to get change. Oh, I'll go here on the end. Sweet. Well, I'm dying for a brew now. I've got the milk. Got the milk. Oh, I'm glad they sent us to get some emergency milk. When they've got some here anyway, Nade is nearly late for work. Thanks, team. Let's rock! Right, that is not fastened on at, at all. all. For this recovery truck's got a pallet full of rolled up turf on it. They haven't even attempted to fasten on it, it's obviously just placed on the flatbed. You can see it rocking around now. Insecure loads cause more than 24,000 accidents a year. The danger of debris has reached new heights. Whoa. With unscheduled food drops from delivery vans. Oh. And at 70 miles an hour, pallets that could feel like mallets. If you get him now, we might go into the garage. In Cheshire, PCs Ian Cosgrove and Matt Turner are not happy with an insecure load they've spotted driving on their turf. Got it. Why is he getting out already? It always makes me nervous when they start. Oh, he's decamping, look. What's he got rid of then? Hey, mate. You jump out, Woody. Right, you go and sit in the back of that. What if you just put in the edge up there? Um, just you were desperate to get out, weren't you, for some reason? No, I would just extinguish your cigarette. What sort of cigarette? Just a normal right. cigarette. Just on fire yeah. there. The reason why I've stopped you is because of that. It's not strapped down, it's bouncing all over the place. Right. That I've, needs to be strapped I've down. I've just come from just round the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strap it now. Yeah, so it's going to be a ticket for that. We've just followed you. It, it, it was like this, all over the place. All that falls over, we get a call. Oh, it's chaos. Call. Is it your vehicle, sir? Are you insured to drive yeah, it? Yeah, trader's policy. All right, be off there, like that. Yeah, I'll have a look in a minute. Yeah, I'm not telling you lies. I've got it here in my pocket. Right. Back in the patrol car, Matt is checking there's only the grass on the back of the truck to worry about. What is it? Just a cigarette. What's that, Luke? Oh, yeah. Just thought we'd been at a garage. Right, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. I thought you were going to run off when you started opening the door then. Bridge and you've got cannabis leaves on your hat. <laughs> yeah, my mate got me this from Turkey. Did he? <laughs> Go on, let you jump out. I to say sorry about that. No, you're all right, listen, don't worry about it. It's straps for a car, but it's better than it was. It's only going down the road, but uh, at least the old lot won't come off now, so he's done his best. But it's taken us to stop him to point it out, but he knew, so he chanced his arm. He knew he's got grass on his hat. <laughs> <laughs> There's grass everywhere. Good result, really. He can get back and put his turf down. 
but you know, if you're going to break the lawn, we'll come after you. It's bad. That's my old primary school. I went to it many years ago. It seemed a lot bigger when I was uh, only a toddler. PC Mike Clark's school reports failed to predict his future career. I remember the cops coming into primary school. I had a good look around the old Rover three and a half litres. I never thought I'd be driving one. I thought I'd end up in the back of one more often than not. But now I got to drive one, so I didn't turn out too badly after all. On the M56, Mike spots a fellow crime fighter who's about to find himself on the wrong side of the law. I've got a bat black Batmobile BMW in front of us. It's uh, picking up a bit of speed. So we're just doing a bit of a pace on him now at 91 at the moment. We've got steady 93. 94, 93 miles an hour. Don't think he's aware of our presence at the moment. Drivers who break the speed limit often break other laws as well. The driver of this speeding silver van races away from Thames Valley Police at 90 miles per hour in a 30 zone. Flying through red lights. He then takes two roundabouts the wrong way, managing to shake off the cops, but not for long. Just a few days later, he tried to make off from the police again, but this time they caught up with him. The driver was convicted of two counts of dangerous driving and driving without a license. He received a 12-month suspended jail sentence, 200 hours of unpaid work, and was disqualified from driving for two years. And the fact he's gone into lane one probably actually clocks us now. On the M56 in Cheshire, PC Mike Clark is on the tail of a high-performance BMW. He's clocked, breaking the speed limit. He's slowed right down. Because he's gone from 94 in lane two down to 75. Well, we'll wait till after this off slip, and we'll get him in and have a chat. Have a quick shout with you about the speed down there, okay? Speeding. Yes, mate. 93, 94 miles an hour on the motorway. Limits obviously 70. Yeah. Okay. Let's come and grab a seat, my mate. Jump in the back for me there, please, mate. Ninety-three, ninety-four miles an hour on the motorway. If it goes wrong at that speed, yes. people are going to get hurt. Okay. Yes, I understand. Have you got a clean licence? I have six points. Is that for speeding by any chance? Just, uh, I think it's a couple of 30 miles limit right, okay. speed. Yeah. As you've already got points on your licence, it's highly unlikely that they'll offer you any driver course. I think I'm in trouble now because I, yeah. with this kind of car, either if I go 93 for one second... It I wasn't for one realize, second, mate. You yeah. know, happened so many yeah. times, so I need to deal with that. The issue is on, on, on these, it's nice having something that's quick. So I don't drive up. always on 93 miles an hour like us okay. all the time. It just happened in a room, like, and then I didn't realise. Do me station attended check, please. Yes, I It's on an M6 in black. Yeah, BMW M6 in blue. Is that correct? Yeah, I wrapped. It's got a wrap on it, yeah, it's matte black. Is it you that got that wrapped? 
I just got wrapped like a one week. Did you ago. get it wrapped? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I get it wrapped. Yeah. Any reason why you've gone black like a Batmobile then? Because I like it. <laughs> like it. I'm not Batman. The, the... <laughs> Maybe sometimes I drive fast like him, but my mistake. <laughs> I decide to change the color is temporary, so it's make me the official bat car now. <laughs> they seem like a really nice fella, but but you really need to slow down. Yes, I do. Yeah. I need. Okay. I really need. And if you're gonna master anything in life, it's that right foot. Yes. Because that'll get you more trouble than most things will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I know. <laughs> Batman in the Batmobile. You could have been going off to like some secret meeting or something if he is the real Batman. At 90 odd mile an hour, there's rubbish all over the carriageways. If you hit something at that speed, you know, it, it can end, end up quite messy. common text I send is running late, going to be off late. It's another night shift for PC Rich Woodward and it's the same old problem. Every bloody day. Sorry, going to be off late. To catch up, I have to drive the balls off it a bit. Just for your info, in 22.45, I was, vehicle was parked outside a mosque, and they come back outside and they get the vehicle, they're gone. We've got a very pleasant 155 miles an hour at the moment, we're heading up six south. I'm about three vehicles behind the marked vehicle. We've got a patrol behind the stolen Range Rover. It's a uniform 98, I will catch you up. It's not just vehicles that pose a problem on Britain's roads. Pedestrians like this do, too. And they can cause a collision. Some people take a taxi to the airport. Even with a high vis on, this man is a danger. Absolutely reprobate. A very pleasant 155 miles an hour at the moment. In Cheshire, PC Rich Woodward is on full throttle to catch up with a suspected stolen vehicle on the M6. It's a uniform 98. I'm all catching up. Into the roadworks, lane four, only one lane running, 50 miles per hour. Jingo, whether we managed to get there in time because of the roadworks. Oh, roadworks, give me a break, for God's sake. Two more patrols join the pursuit and are gaining ground on the suspected stolen car. My charity is floor behind the vehicle now. I can't see how many options are on board, not known to me. Rich is three cars behind the suspect vehicle. Yeah, 
hard to get to bring it to the stop when you're ready. Hands! Hands! Off the engine now. Do not move. Do not move. Vehicle stop. The driver and the passenger both have now been arrested. Are you going to be good? Can you get my shoes? Where are they? Uh, are his shoes in there? Oh well, we'll have to wait. His shoes. He hasn't got his shoes on. Main priority now is just getting the M6 clear and moving again. Confirm everyone's back in the vehicles now. The vehicle got held up in the slow moving traffic due to all the roadworks on the M6, and we've taken the opportunity to jump out uh, and detain the occupants. So we've just uh, got the carriageway clear and we're going to get on to the next junction to see what stories they've got as to why they're in this stolen vehicle. Which one was the driver, did you know? I think this gentleman. This chap here is suggesting he may well have hired this car from an app. What's the app called? Not hire my stolen cars .com. Unless I've hired the car that someone else has stolen, and this is not me doing some weird car fetch thing. This all sounds a bit fishy, doesn't it? We're just trying to find his uh, his ID in the car somewhere. He said he's just hired the car, but it's all a bit strange. West. Hotel uniform so night. On the street outside. Don't okay. turn to anyone, you just pick it up. It's gone on and he supposedly hired this car, so he's then been sent to this address here, which is where the losers come from, that person. So he's then got there, he says ping me when I get there, which okay. he has done, and he's remotely opened the car. And then he goes in, start it, and he disappears away. Don't know how that bit works. Wow. I don't like the idea of that really. No. <laughs> um, and now and now we're here. Just like saying he's hired it from an app. At the same time, he's hiring the car, allegedly. Someone else has reported it's stolen. We're just trying to clarify how this person's come to be in possession of it. But he's travelled up to Manchester Airport to pick up somebody he knows from Manchester Airport. They've flown in from Germany. No sooner have they landed, they've been pulled out of a car in handcuffs. Welcome to England. Hello, I'm with a very nice white Land Rover Discovery on the M6, which we've stopped. Am I right? I think you've reported it stolen. So you hire your car out via that car share app. So this guy thinks he's hired it legitimately. But when was he meant to collect it? I'm just looking at his app. So it says Thursday the 14th, pick up at 0030. So he's an hour early. Okay. So. The fact that this guy's got the car and did have a booking for it and he's driving it back to Birmingham, are you happy that he has got the car and, and hasn't stolen it? He's not so happy because we've dragged him out of the car in handcuffs. <laughs> that was nice. He says sorry. He says sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. All this because you picked it up an hour early, apparently. That is something to talk about. It's a good story. What's the moral of the story? Don't hire cars or strange I'm apps. Doing it again, ever. Best of luck with the rest of your journey. Yeah. If you see a load of police cars behind you, don't panic. I've told them. <laughs> I'm not stopping next time. Yeah. <laughs> They're sorting out the mark and getting removed off your car. Thank you. Pleasure. Alright. See you later. What a pickle. Let's go. If you have any dashcam clips you think could feature in the next series of Motorway Cops, Catching Britain's Speeders, send them along with your contact details to contact us at purpleproductions.co.uk. It was the World Cup scandal that made more headlines than any on-pitch action. Don't miss when Sven scored with Ulrika brand new tomorrow at nine. Next night, the hot summer is causing Sister Vicky serious problems. She has to find ways of keeping sensitive medication at the right temperature. Easier said than done. A new casualty 24-7, every second counts. <laughs>